on behalf of Glenn's The writer of Ecclesiastes, that's a little hot. Ben, I may get you to turn it down just a little bit for me, if you don't mind. Don, okay, Don's doing it, great. The writer of Ecclesiastes, who was not an optimist by nature, was one who saw the realities of life. And when he talked about life, he talked about it in extremes. So he would talk about something that would be from this side all the way to this side. And in Ecclesiastes 3, we see how that pendulum swings back and forth in his thinking. He tried to put some reason to seemingly random things that happen in our lives. And this is what the writer said. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and mend and sil be silent and speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I like that passage because it sort of encompasses everything in life. And then he says this, I've seen the burden that God has placed on humanity. The burden is not a burden like a problem. It is allowing us to experience every dimension of life from one extreme to the other. And if anybody understood the fullness of life, Glenn Jones did. And he lived it to the full, and he lived it from one extreme all the way over to the other. But the writer punctuates what he says in the most beautiful of words. He said, I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He said, God has made everything beautiful in its time. In Glenn's life, everything was beautiful in its time. The way that this writer speaks of what is there and speaks of the beauty of that brings us to the point of the memories that we have. One of my favorite writers... Frederick Beekner said, you can kiss your family and friends goodbye and put miles between you, but at the same time you carry them in your heart and your mind and your being. Because you do not just live in a world, but the world lives in you. He also wrote, when you remember me, it means you've carried something of who I am with you, that I have left some mark of who I am on who you are. It means you can still summon me back to your mind, even though countless years and miles may stand between us. It means that if we meet again, you'll know me. It means even after I die, you can still see my face and hear my voice 
and speak to me in your heart. I hope that for the rest of your lives that you will continue to speak to Glenn in your hearts. I hope you will continue to ask God to offer him blessings because God can bless us on this side of the river and the other as well. And I hope that you will always feel connected. So today, we gather in this place to remember the life of Glenn Jones as we carry him in our hearts. So let us pray. Spirit of God, as we think about Glenn Jones, we think about the place that he has in our hearts, in our lives, the memories that have been made with these people who have gathered, so many of them, every one of them feeling a special connection to him. I pray that as we lift this moment before you and lift the family before you, that you will be their strong protector, their comforter, their refuge of peace and hope, and the confidence that they have in you will come to full fruition through the faith that they have and the love they feel from your heart. As they weep, you weep. As they remember, you encourage the memories. And then as they are able to move on with life and rejoice in living, you will be their peace there as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray.
tall for this. <laughs> oh, man. Warms my heart to see so many people here for Glenn. <sighs> Told myself I wouldn't cry. Uh, I can see Glenn making a joke right now so that I wouldn't. Uh, first, I just want to say I'm honored to be able to stand up here, that I was asked to be able to speak on behalf of Glenn Jones. Uh, I feel like you can't just say Glenn, you have to say Glenn Jones. <laughs> uh, but I did want to start with saying that Glenn was somebody that loved his family. Before I met y'all, I knew everything about you. Everything about you. The stories he would tell, and he would bring you into each and everything that we would do everything so I knew you before I even met you but it is to me it shows how much he truly loved y'all and he always wanted y'all to be a part of his life uh, Glenn Jones loved his friends man you can look in this place and tell that he loves his friends and that y'all loved him you got people standing up in the back man. Glenn Jones was a special guy when I was asked to to speak without a doubt absolutely so I got to thinking about a couple things when I think about Glenn Jones. One of the first things that popped in my head was Glenn Jones' shoe game was on point. <laughs> if you know Glenn, you know his shoes are going to be on point every day. Whether it's boots or whether it's his loafers or whether it's the new Air Max that came out, his shoe game is going to be on point. And it also blew my mind on how much knowledge he had about shoes. He knew what they were, what they were called, when they come out, the style, the maker. Oh. Another thing that really sticks out to me about Glenn, we were talking about it earlier, was what an amazing storyteller Glenn was. You could sit there for hours and just listen to Glenn tell stories. Glenn was so relatable. He can relate to anybody, whether you're 16 or 60, he can relate to you. He can find a story to tell you. A lot of times he's going to bring his family into it, or he's going to bring some shoes, or he's going to bring a funny story, but he's going to relate to you some way and somehow. Glenn Jones was not just a funny person. Glenn Jones was a hilarious person. Show of hands, who's got a belly laugh from Glenn Jones? Man, two hands. I'd put my feet up if I could. Oh, but if Glenn Jones was around, that means a good time is around. There's no sadness. It's always laughter and a good time. There's a smile on your face, and that's what Glenn brought everywhere he went. So it makes my heart happy to see so many people here smiling, thinking about Glenn this morning. Last thing that I thought about when I thought about Glenn Jones is Glenn Jones is a genuine guy. When Glenn Jones comes around, you're going to get Glenn Jones. It's not a facade. He's not going to put on a mask. He's going to be Glenn Jones everywhere he goes. Doesn't matter if he's at work, if he's at a party, if he's at dinner, you're going to get Glenn Jones. He was a genuine person. Every time I talked to Glenn, every time we got around each other, it was about me and my family. How are you doing? How's your kids doing? How's your wife doing? He knew my wife was crazy, but he asked about her anyway. <laughs> yeah. A lot of y'all know her, so y'all know I'm speaking some truth. <laughs> oh. But I always appreciated that about Glenn. We saw each other all the time when we worked together, but it was always, how are you doing? How's your kids? How's your wife? How's your family? To me, he was just a genuine, genuine person, and I'll always remember that. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart is good medicine. And tell me that's not Glenn Jones. A joyful heart. If Glenn Jones is around, your heart is going to be smiling. It's going to be a happy time. Like, again, no, there's no sadness. There's nothing but goodness when it comes around Glenn. Everybody saw what Glenn brought to the table. Everybody knows what Glenn is, what Glenn's about. I got to share a video with the family this morning. A story I would like to share that I think about Glenn 
and we were training in McDonough. So this was the first time I was away from my little girl. She was about two years old at the time. It broke my heart. I had to be away from my girl all week. And my wife, too, because I love her. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had to be away from him, and it was just, it was really getting to me. We were going to dinner one night, Glenn and I. He'd take me to dinner every night, just try to get my mind off of it. But my wife sent me a video of my little two-year-old running up and down the sidewalk at the restaurant they were eating at. You know, and it got me. It got me in my heart. You know, I was in my fields. I was away from them. I got the video. She's saying, I love you, Dad. I miss you. And I was like, dude, I just want to go home. He said, hold on a second, man. He said, pull out your phone. I said, okay, Glenn, what, what you got? So Glenn throws his hands up. We're about to go into a restaurant ourselves, and he runs up and down. <laughs> he runs up and down the sidewalk, just back and forth. His hands up, acting like my little girl. He got me to video that and send it to my wife. And I laughed. You can't hear anything in the video but me laughing. <laughs> My wife found that video a couple days ago and sent it to me. And we've kept it for, it's been five or six years now. But man, to me that just speaks to who Glenn was. I was having a tough time. I was struggling. And he made it all better. I feel like everybody in here has had that interaction with Glenn Jones before. Glenn Jones was very encouraging. He was a very encouraging person. And to me, he left something with me that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And that was, if Glenn Jones is not there, Glenn Jones is missed. When we were at work, if Glenn was sick and couldn't be there, it had an effect on everybody at work. Glenn's not there, don't really want to do this day without Glenn. But he, what he brought to the table and what he, what he brought every single day is he's not there, he's missed. And I noticed that from early on in our friendship, that if Glenn's not there, Glenn is missed. And I said, that's the kind of person that I want to be. I want to be a Glenn Jones. I want to be that type of person. If I'm not there, people miss me. That's the kind of person that I want to be. So Glenn has encouraged me, and that has stuck with me for the rest, or it will stick with me for the rest of my life, is I want to be that person, that if I'm not there, I'm missed. But I feel like Glenn put that in a lot of people, and he was that person that if he's not there, he's truly missed. So we know today that Glenn's no longer here with us, and today he is truly missed. But we should all have comfort in knowing where Glenn is. If you know Glenn, you truly know Glenn, you knew where his fate stood, you know where he is today, and you know that he's got our good Lord cracking a rib. <laughs> so I just want to say that I'm grateful to say that Glenn Jones was my friend. And until we meet again, brother. Thank you all so much. One of the reasons I wanted to be here and stand up here on Glenn's sister is I just literally wanted to look out at this face, these, all these faces, and know these are the faces of so many people that loved and enjoyed and cared for Glenn. And I just wanted to see you. And I thought, I just want to get up there and see everybody. And it's sweet to hear what Anthony shares because it's so consistent with who he was. Because he was a very consistent person, and we all see different facets of that, but it's the same person over and over. Uh, Glenn's the kind of guy that you feel like quickly you knew him all your life. Um, as his younger sister, I literally knew him all my life. <laughs> so it's sweet to share some thoughts with you all, and I think you'll identify, him, identify with them too. I mean, so true what Anthony said, like just his hope, like he's so funny. He is just genuinely such a funny guy, and that was one of the fun things about our own family. It's kind of like you just wanted to kind of get him started. Like, how was your week? How was your weekend? And you're just kind of hoping he gets into storytelling mode because then it's just kind of on in a different way. And we all can enjoy that about him. And I think that was like a really huge gift of what, the, what God put in him that he shared with the world, what I just love. Uh, other things that you really just come to mind for Glenn is just how thoughtful and generous uh, he is. I still in my head think about him in the present because in a way he is very presently with us. 
in our thoughts and our memories. So just his thoughtfulness, his generosity. And I think in our own minds right now, we can all imagine and remember a time that he was that person for us, thoughtful and generous. I'm loved to buy people's meals. I'm always thinking out, looking out for other people, thinking of other people. In our own family, this is just a sweet thing that you can know about Glenn. On Sundays, he would put mom's garbage out. On Mondays, on his way home from work, he takes the garbage cans back in. Uh, there's plenty of days after work, he calls mom just to check in, how are you doing? And one of my favorites is on Saturday mornings, he calls mom because they both love college football. And he kind of tells her the college football lineup so that they can uh, both be watching and she'll know what to watch and when to watch it. And I just love that because that is a thoughtful son, um, generous with his time, and that's really precious. Another one that I wanted to share was specifically how Glenn was someone who was genuinely nice. And really, the two of the biggest things I wanted to get up, I wanted to see everybody, and I just wanted to say, like, man, he was genuinely nice. And this is shocking to me as a sibling that I can say this. Um, but literally, Glenn was never mean to me. Now, I'm not saying I, he, he was not ever mean. He didn't say anything or do anything to hurt me. I don't mean that I couldn't annoy him and frustrate him. I 100% could as his sister. It's kind of what we do. But he was never mean to me. And that's an amazing thing to say that when I, this is when he's a kid even, six and nine. He's three years older. I'm nine, he's 12. He's 12, I'm 15. I genuinely do not have any memories of him um, in any way that, and I think that's amazing. I think that's a beautiful thing of who God also created him to be and, and what he shared with the world, his genuineness, um, his genuine niceness, um, genuine love for us and for other people. That's really special. One of my favorite things he would often wear was a green stretchy bracelet around his wrist, and it said, if God is for us, who can be against us? And that was very affirming for me. I loved reading that, being reminded of that. It was very helpful in these past weeks, even just to remember that, to be reminded of that. And even um, just knowing that Glenn wore that because he also believed it, and he also wanted to remember it. So I wanted to finish my portion of just, again, just thanking you for being here. Love seeing your faces. Um, just as Anthony shared, Glenn loved his family, and he loved his friends like family. 100% loved his friends like family. So you are here um, because you loved Glenn, and it will be said again, but Glenn loved you for sure. So I'd like to finish with those verses from Romans 8, where the saying on that bracelet, bracelet came, up, came from. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but graciously gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is he who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Angels, demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
Lalone wanted me to share her thoughts. This is what Lalone wrote. Glenn Jones was a Columbus native, even though he didn't live in Columbus all his life. He was born here on 16 March 1971 and then left with his Army family for the next 17 years before he moved back. He got back to Columbus for his senior year at Pacelli High School and had a wonderful senior year. He joined the clubs, went to the football games, played fullback on the soccer team, and made lifelong friends. He was a Viking all the way and cheered and was at the game when Pacelli won state last year. In high school, he drove a 10-year-old 1979 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme when everyone else had Hondas or Nissan Maximas. He said it helped develop his self-esteem. <laughs> the neat thing was that everyone liked to go places in his car, and it didn't hold him back. And because he drove around Columbus in high school, giving people rides home and to the games, he knew all the back roads and how they intersected. He never went the same way twice to get to a destination. We used to think he must have been moonlighting as an Uber driver in his time off. While in college, Glenn joined Kappa Sigma. And the association with the young men he met there lasted his whole life. He loved all the fraternity events, even the winter skeet event at the cabin on the lake, which was a very cold experience. After graduation, cruises and fun times that the older members enjoyed, but they kept him connected. Loads of shared experiences also kept them close. Glenn stated at Tees, started at Tesis on the phones, and someone encouraged him to apply to be a trainer and he was accepted, and that began a whole new calling in Glenn's life. He excelled at being a trainer, probably because he was a very reluctant student all through school. He used humor to keep his class interested and loved to illustrate points with humorous stories. He took it personally when a student wasn't doing well and wanted everyone to graduate and succeed. He sincerely wanted them to have a job if they wanted it. He enjoyed all of the camaraderie at work and cared about all of his co-workers. For sure, your work family is family. You share much time together. Glenn was a generous person. When asked to help out with covering someone or taking another class, his answer was almost always yes. Glenn loved his family very much, even though we drove him a little crazy. He was standing with his mom on Wednesdays for had a he had a standing with his mom on Wednesdays for a dinner and cruise around in his car. He also had a standing appointment on Sundays with his family for lunch. And most of his friends knew to text after 2 p.m. on Sunday to set up the next event. Glenn cherished his friends. He enjoyed all the time he spent with them, enjoying meals and trivia and ball games and generally hanging out, talking and sharing time together. Glenn loved life, loved people, loved his friends, and loved his family. I don't think he wasted a minute of the 52 years he was granted, Lalone wrote. He lived life cheerfully and was present in every moment. She concluded with, Glenn loved his friends, his work family, trips to South Carolina, trips to golf tournaments, Sawgrass and Ryder Cup, Kappa Sigma Brothers, Saturday lunch with friends, eating at Speakeasy with the gang, traveling with Tesis to England, Amsterdam, and Panama, going to tailgates with friends, watching Georgia football on TV or in person, go dogs, she wrote. Spending time with people he cared about. He loved Gary, Lalone, Lauren, and Benji, and he loved all of you very much. How many of you were part of his Kappa Sig family? Y'all truly have been brothers in this. How many of you are part of his Tesis family? 
How many of you just like knowing Glenn? <laughs> I figured. You know, Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for time of adversity. Glenn's avocation was being a friend to others, and he was with his friends when they needed him. And it was touching to see how many people called him friend and how many came to him even in those last hours of his life and were with him there. You know, those are challenges. And sometimes it awakens within us that thing, oh, I just can't take that. But these were friends who were there with him and loved him to the very last breath. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down life for one's friends. You know, we often interpret that as dying, giving up life. But you know, sometimes it's taking part of the lifetime you have and giving it to someone else. Sometimes it's stepping in and making possible someone's life to be better because you give them some time of your own to help them with what they're going through in that moment. And so, yes, it's correct that it is when we have no limits to giving life, but it also can mean that we live out that life with them and help them. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that the only way to be a friend, to have a friend, is to be one. And the testimony to life and priorities in the life of Glenn Jones was in the number of friends he had and how he always stayed engaged in their lives. On a Saturday with a championship game coming, you packed a chapel to come and remember this person who was more important than anything else you had to do today. When his dad was so ill, I was moved by the way that the whole family rallied around Gary and around Lalone and how much love they gave them. I saw Laura and Benji and Glenn as they sat there, as they covered whatever needed to be done, and as they made things as right as they could be in one of the most horrible times in your lives as you were watching Gary's illness take over. When I think back on those moments, the one thing that always amazed me was how calm and together the family was. That was a testimony to the strength of that family. That you were a family who understood faith and love in the midst of adversity and you could keep the, the life together no matter what happened. There would have been no way to have had a strong family unit that was present had it not been for years of faithful, loving relationship building. You can't do that in the middle of a crisis. It's something that you have earned by the way you have put it together and been faithful through the years. And Lauren, you put it beautifully in your relationship with your brother. Every time I was with them, I went away having felt the presence of family love and the loving peace of Jesus. And Glenn was it, a part of it in his own way, as were Lauren and Benji in theirs. I go back to the immortal words of 1 John 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Whoever loves has been born of God and knows God, and anyone who does not love doesn't know God, because God is love. Sometimes a person whose faith is rather personal allows a window into his soul as you see the way he uses that love toward others. I think that's what Jesus was saying. Glenn was one who was in love with life and he enjoyed everything that he did. Deuteronomy 12, 7 reminds us of the enjoyment of the life God has given us. There also you and your household shall eat before the Lord your God and rejoice in all of your undertakings in which the Lord your God has blessed you. Whatever he did, he enjoyed those undertakings. And whatever Glenn did, he found a way to make it enjoyable. In his career at Tesis, yes, he moved from the phone center to become a trainer, but that migration was logical. Because as much as he loved people, 
he couldn't just talk to them on the phone. He had to see them and be in the room with them and be a part of their lives. As a trainer, he was able to help another person find their place in the business, discover their strengths, and build up in the weak places and apply with satisfaction and peace the gifts and find success in a future. So literally, he joined arms and began a part of that journey with the ones he trained. It was personal, very personal. And that is a godly thing too. Remember what Jeremiah 27, 29, 11 says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. God's Holy Spirit works as the trainer of our souls. And when you accept that call in this life to help someone else, you do exactly what Jeremiah says the Lord does for us. You work for their success, their hope, and their possibilities. And there are people with careers that would never have had them had it not been for, for Glenn's faithfulness in what he did. In short, you have heard from Anthony and for Lauren and Lalone about this good man. The theme of his life has been caring friendship. The inspiration of that life goes on with us. Jesus said that we are to love one another, and that's the purpose for which we live all of our days. And I want to say one more thing about Glenn Jones. He's a man who squeezed all the goody out of life. He loved life to the full, and he enjoyed the journey. You know, the psalmist offers us insight into that. Even as a writer of Ecclesiastes talks about the extremes, the psalmist explains to us how life happens. We begin in the green pastures by still waters. We begin in that protected mode of life. We're born into that. And the minute we step outside of that, life begins to happen. And all sorts of things become challenges and opportunities. And the way we approach it determines the quality of our life. Yeah, there'll be enemies. Yeah, there'll be um, a time that you'll need a rod to correct you or a staff to bring you back in line a bit. Yes, there will be times where there'll need to be some anointing oil because of an illness or because of a need that way. And there's even a valley of the shadow of death that you'll go through. But the promise in the psalmist's words, the promise is that thou art with me. We never face any of these things by ourselves. And if we allow the Lord to work, and if we pay attention to Him, He'll walk us through it. There's nothing in Scripture that ever promises if you're a good enough person, you'll never have a massive stroke. There's nothing there that says you'll never have to bury your dad. There's nothing there that says that you'll never have a disappointing or a bad day. But what it says is, when you face those, you will not be by yourself, and the Lord will walk with you, and he did with Glenn. The psalmist put it this way, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy. In Glenn's life, we've got to go back to the Hebrew. Surely goodness, and it can be interpreted love, translated love. It did. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. There wasn't a day that Glenn was not loved. And the final promise is, we begin in a good place and we end in a better place. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's what faith does. You know, Jesus understood the importance of our hearing that and understanding it. He told his own disciples whom he knew would face a time when he would not be physically walking with them, but would still be present. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. In the miracle of those last days, you saw how many things went together in the midst of such an awful time. They went together for the good. Lalone, you were with him when he came into the world, and you were with him when he went home from this world. And that's something you wanted in your heart. Benji and Lauren, you wanted to be there and be a part of that. And God gave you the gift of being with him. Glenn was a good man. He's grown up in the Lord, has been one who lived according to the values taught in his home, and was reared with that knowledge. And it bloomed into loving people. I thought about the words of Homer who said he was a friend to man and he lived in a house by the side of the road. And a poet took that phrase and turned it into this poem that my dad used to love. They're hermit souls that live withdrawn in the peace of their self-content. They're souls like stars that dwell apart in the fellowless firmament. They're pioneer souls that blaze their paths where highways never ran. But let me live by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Let me live in my house by the side of the road where the race of men go by, the men who are good, the men who are bad, as good and as bad as I, I would not sit in the scorner's seat nor hurl a cynic's ban. Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I see from my house by the side of the road, by the side of the highway of life, the men who press with the ardor of hope, the men who are faint with the strife. But I turn not away from their smiles nor their tears, both part of an infinite plan. Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I know there are brook gladdened meadows ahead and mountains of wearisome height, that the road passes on through the long afternoon and stretches away to the night, but still I rejoice when the travelers rejoice and weep with the strangers that moan nor live in my house by the side of the road like a man who dwell, dwells alone. Let me live in my house by the side of the road where the race of men go by. They're good, they're bad, they're weak, they're strong, wise, foolish, so am I. Then why should I sit in the scorner's seat or hurl a cynic's ban? Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Lauren and Malone sent out, what Lauren I guess did, sent out a note to friends and said, would you just describe my brother with one word? And we got a bunch of words that came back. And all of them I can share. <laughs> have you ever been to, have you ever been, have you ever read something and it was going on, and then at the end of it, there were just ellipses that said, what I'm saying just keeps going on and on and on. These words are like ellipses at the end of Glenn's life. I'm going to read them, and I want you to hear like dot, 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 dot. They'll fade away into this future, meaning that they will go on and on and on every time someone mentions him or every time someone thinks of him. These are the words. True friend, great friend, brother, humorous, witty, kind, great listener, kindred spirit, family, loyal, fun, awesome, genuine, outgoing storyteller, spirited, authentic, pure, considerate, endearing, compassionate, valued, consistent, insightful, and encourager. Mentor, role model, noble, smart, positive, charismatic, caring, cool, illuminated, present. A good time, warm-hearted, kind-hearted, affectionate, fun-loving, hilarious, engaging, sincere, smooth operator. <laughs> Some of them didn't get the idea of just one word, I tell you. Beautiful, electric, polite, 
solid, easygoing, funny, grateful, authentic, free-hearted, thoughtful, generous, intelligent, knowledgeable, clever, incomparable, irreplaceable, one in a million, loving. Lamone, Lauren, Benji, our prayers are with you. We are here for you in the days ahead. We want to love you like Glenn loved other people. And we want to encourage you like he encouraged other people. And we want to be God's instruments of peace in your life. Your heart is heavy, but we share the burden with our love and care. You are ours in heart. And we will love you as family. Amen. Will you pray with me? Spirit of our living God, this day has honored one of your beautiful creations. You created him with all sorts of wonderful things, talents and abilities, just the right quirkiness and just the right joy, just the right mischief and just the right possibility. And the loyalty and the love and the faithfulness that will go on in the friendships that are felt in the hearts of all of those who gather in this place. So now we pray that you'll dismiss this room full of people who love Glenn. Dismiss them with a sense of your peace and a satisfaction that they have done something Glenn-like for his family. They have loved them and that love is appreciated and felt and will be an eternal gift. In the name of Jesus, bring comfort and peace. Amen. The family asks that I end with this, and I'm going to read it exactly the way they gave it to me. This concludes the formal memorial service. And now the next services begin as you go out, grab some friends, have lunch, and honor Glenn and cheer for the Bulldogs. The family will remain here at the front if you wish to come and speak to them before you leave, and they'll just be standing right here. But now as you go from this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you a profound sense of peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.